Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Scott Himmelstein. I am president of the Board of Governors for California's Community College uh, System. And it is my pleasure on behalf of all my colleagues on the Board of Governors to welcome you to the 11th annual John W. Rice Diversity and Equity Award Ceremony here at the Sterling Hotel. Uh, before we get started, uh, please give a round of applause for our music today from the Franklin Court Quartet. I want to also thank uh, some of our special guests in the audience this morning. Uh, they include uh, a member of our assembly, Dr. Richard Pan. Thank you for being here. And someone I'll introduce in a minute, the mayor of Sacramento, the Honorable Kevin Johnson. And a very special guest, Dr. Uh, Norman Levin, who recently gave Bakersfield City College a $14 million gift, the single largest gift given to any community college anywhere in the United States. The donation will be used to fund scholarships, buildings, and expand educational opportunities. Part of the endowment will go to studying Latino and Native American cultures, so it's pretty obvious that Mr. or Dr. Levin uh, sees value in diversity and equity in higher education, and we thank Dr. Levin very much. Uh, now, I would like to formally open our meeting of the Board of Governors of the California Community College System and ask Executive Vice Chancellor Steve Bruckman to call the roll. Here. Thank you. Our national anthem this morning will be sung this morning by Brandy Howdigy. Brandy? Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light? What so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we wore. We're so gallantly streaming, and the rockets regular, the bombs bursting in the gate through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave? Thank you. Thank you, Brandy. Well done. Uh, our first speaker is no stranger to the topic of diversity and equity in education. As the founder of St. Hope Public Schools, 
Sacramento Mayor Kevin Johnson understands the power and importance of ensuring uh, equality in education and that education is available to everyone. He is the first native Sacramento and the first African American to be elected to the office of uh, mayor. Uh, I had a great pleasure working with Kevin when I was in the governor's office and it continues uh, today, ladies and gentlemen, a great advocate for education, the Honorable Kevin Johnson. All right, good morning. How's everyone doing? Good. Welcome to Sacramento. Before I get started, who in here is from Anaheim? <laughs> Security, can you? I don't know if you, the rest of you folks know in this darn room, the Anaheim group was trying to take our basketball team. So we were able to prevail and keep the Keens in Sacramento. I'm going to keep an eye on you, though. <laughs> Dr. Pan, thank you. Uh, I'm, I, I am so excited. Uh, Mrs. Rice, thank you so much for coming back year after year, and Dr. Scott. Um, community college has played such a critical role in our community. You guys know that. Um, I was lucky enough to get a scholarship um, for, for basketball to UC Berkeley, which was great. But there were so many kids in my community who didn't get a scholarship and didn't have athletics. And the community college system plays such an important role. And you guys know that. It's an important bridge for high school students. It's an important bridge for those trying to re-enter the education system to higher education. So whether you're getting trained for the workforce, whether you want to go on to a four-year college, the work that you folks are doing in this room is so critical in our country. And I know we talk a lot about K-12, and we talk a lot about the four-year colleges. You guys are the sweet spot. And I just want to thank the recipients here for this award, the Dr. Rice Award. Um, when you think about sign language and you think about the multicultural recipients from American River College, you think about the veterans program down in Santa Barbara, that's the diversity and equity that Dr. Rice was talking about. So welcome to Sacramento. Keep your hands, hands off my kings. Enjoy the rest of your program. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Johnson. Um, at this point, I would uh, uh, like to uh, present the Vice President of our Board of Governors, Alice Perez, who will share with us some special memories of our former Board of Governors member, Dr. John W. Rice, and she will also introduce the Chancellor. Good morning, everybody. For those of you that are outside of Sacramento, you're pretty lucky because it's a pretty cool day today. We had some pretty hot weather last week and we're blessed today with some cooler weather. Thank you, President Hemmelstein, for introducing me this morning. It's an honor to be here today to speak about Dr. John Rice, who was and was a great member of our board, the California Community Colleges, and he was a great leader to our system's 2.75 million students. He was not only a former member of the Board of Governors, he wore many hats. He was a pastor, a counselor, an educator, an activist, a husband, a father, and to many, he was also a mentor. From 1992 to the year 2000, he served on the Board of Governors, and we were very fortunate to have him on the Board of Governors of the community colleges. He was always driven by a powerful desire to help change lives for the better. He frequently said that the students who can truly succeed should get the help they need so they don't fall through the cracks. He dedicated his life to making sure that we do not fail those students, young and older, that seek an education to better themselves and the lives of their families as well. A former chancellor of our system, Tom Newsbaum, who served with Dr. Rice and is here this morning, recently said, I'm going to quote him, maybe not word for word. <laughs> John's personal history living through the civil rights era informed the core of his leadership on behalf of the community colleges. He was a man of many attributes who successfully managed to weave matters of equity through all that he did. His very presence served as a reminder to everyone in the room that equity matters. And without equity, our society 
at large would not succeed. He inspired those around him to take note of their actions and be mindful that all college programs must be inclusive. I would like to recognize Tom. Can you please stand? And I think during these times that we are currently going through with the budget crisis that we're experiencing, we need to continue to be mindful of our students and we need to be mindful of the purpose of why we're all here today. And that is to provide access to education. Now it's my pleasure to introduce to you a man who has been a professor, he's also worn many hats, a community college president, a state assembly member, and a senator. Any idea who I'm talking about? <laughs> And now, he is our great chancellor. Please help me welcome the California Community College's Chancellor, Jack Scott. Well, uh, thank you, Vice President Perez, for those kind words. Uh, this is always, to me, an exciting occasion uh, to uh, honor a man who stood for diversity and then to give out awards to those people in our system who are practicing diversity. And I'm uh, so proud of our Board of Governors. Uh, you uh, heard the roll call. Uh, these are people who are volunteers. Uh, they come to the Capitol uh, every other month. They uh, decide policy issues. And uh, they have been so supportive and so insightful in their leadership uh, while I've had the privilege uh, these past two and a half years to serve as the chancellor. So I'd just like for all of the Board of Governors to stand. They answered the roll call, but I'd like for you to see them in person. Stand up. I know one of our Board of Governors is going to be particularly proud this morning, Peter McDougall, was the past president of Santa Barbara City College, and two of our three awards go to programs that are at Santa Barbara City College. So maybe you helped plant a few seeds there, Peter. Uh, he is serving also as the chair of our Student Success Task Force, which uh, we're working on in order to give a report at the end of the year of ways in which we as a community college can make our students even more successful because we're not only interested in seeing that students come to our college, but we want them to succeed in terms of finishing whatever goal they have in mind, whether that be to transfer on to one of our universities or whether it has to do with completing one of our great career technical programs. By the way, we have 175 of those programs, including everything from nursing, radiological technology, auto servicing, and the list goes on and on. Or to someone who, perhaps after 20 years, recognizes that they need a college education, and so they find their way to the community college. Um, you know, diversity is, is not only, we think of it in some ways as a right, because we're Americans, and our Declaration of Independence uh, declared very early uh, that uh, I, that I believe it's a truth that's self-evident that all men, and we'll add women today, are created equal. And uh, so it is the people's college, the community college, that wants to fulfill that. Maya Angelou once wrote these words. We all should know that diversity makes for a rich tapestry, and we must understand that all the threads of the tapestry are equal in value. And that's the ideal of America. We recognize that not only is diversity the right thing to do, but it's the smart thing to do. Because when we give people equal opportunity, then regardless of people's background, their ethnicity, their gender, whatever it might be, their disability, we know that they will add to this great American culture as a result of that diversity. And however imperfect we are at times in fulfilling that, we've always got to keep that in mind as the ideal, and, and so Dr. Rice was certainly a great equalizer. His life was described so well by Vice President Perez, and we're fortunate to uh, hear from his wife this morning. Um, you know, we have, uh, when, you look, when you think about the community colleges, uh, I'm so proud to quote the uh, 
uh, distribution of our students because they do mirror the state of California, whether it's Latino or whether it's African American or whether it's Native American or Asian American or just American. Uh, it's, the, it's the face of California. Uh, we can proudly point to the fact that uh, our student body does mirror the great diversity in this land. Uh, and, and so uh, this is a celebration of what community colleges are all about. Um, I didn't grow up in, in uh, California, so I didn't experience the California community colleges as a student. Uh, but very early in my career, I realized that if the great goal of educating, giving higher education to Californians, it had to be the community college. Uh, we are the largest institution of higher education in all of America, 2.75 million students. Uh, we are proud, certainly, of the University of California and California State University and our private colleges and universities, but we know that we have a unique place uh, in California higher education. And uh, so we are uh, pleased to, today to have with us uh, the uh, widow of uh, John Rice. Uh, she was a partner uh, with him in uh, the stands that he took. She often accompanied him here to Sacramento or other places where the Board of Governors was holding their meetings. Uh, she was supportive in every way. And so I want you to warmly welcome Clara Rice today. And this is our award that we're giving you. Thank you. Thank you, Jack, and thank all of the board members and all distinguished guests, and you all look distinguished this morning. And wow, I can't believe that it has been 11 years. 11 years of honoring my husband's legacy. And it, it has been 11 years that I have survived without this powerful man in my life. I depended on John for his wisdom, his advice, his protection, and his love. He was indeed my gentle giant. There has definitely been a void in my life, and I am sure that in some of your lives, he left that same void. Well, maybe not to the extent of mine, because I was married to him. But if you knew him well, he had to have made some impact on your life. This award that has gone on for 11 years is proof of the impact that he has made. It is such a pleasure to come here year after year to witness these awards given to community college staff members, district, colleges, and programs that have made the greatest contributions toward diversity and equity. This is such an honor bestowed on my husband's memory, and it gives me great joy to witness and be a part of this award ceremony. I am sure that John's spirit lives on, and if spirits can smile, he is smiling right now. And if spirits could talk, he would say to me, baby, I'm so proud of you. And he would say to you, I am honored and thank you. My stepdaughter, Condoleezza Rice, is unable to be here today because of her travels, but she often expresses how grateful she is that you thought enough of her dad that you would take the time and energy to do this, to do this affair in his memory. She sends her thanks and her gratitude. I am sure that she will make it probably next year, hoping that by then her life will be a little more on cruise control. Right now, she has it kicked up in second year. But nonetheless, her thoughts are with us today. I want to congratulate and thank 
Ignacio Ponce of Santa Clara, I'm sorry, Santa Barbara City College for expanding the American Sign Language Program to Dr. Larson of American River College for developing a multicultural week and to Magdalena Torres of the Santa Barbara City College for the Veteran Support Program. I look forward to hearing each of you share your successes. Again, thanks to all of you who had a part in making this event happen. Special thanks to Tosh, who keeps in touch with me and make the arrangements for me to be present on this day. He has done this for 11 years, and he has done it well. Thank you, Tosh. <laughs> Tosh has always been a friend to my husband and to me. I must say that each year, this event gets better and better. And so God bless you richly, each of you. Thank you. Uh, well, next I am going to share a letter from Condoleezza Rice. Uh, if you recall, the past two years she was able to be here, and I was always moved by her description of her childhood and the impact that her father had upon her. Uh, she was, uh, grew up in Birmingham, Alabama. It was during the time of the civil rights structure, a uh, struggle, I mean, and uh, she was even a friend to one of the uh, girls who was killed in that tragic bombing in a Birmingham church. And so she could recount with detail the heroic stand that her father made. She even went back to her grandfather in uh, a, a very unusual story that she tells about how that her grandfather uh, loved higher education and as a very poor uh, farmer, he came to college with a bale of cotton and enrolled in his first year. He came back the second year and he didn't, you know, he was, uh, you know, this phone rings at the most inappropriate times, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I should have cut it off. But anyway, um, he, uh, he came to uh, the uh, college the second year and he didn't have a bale of cotton. And the people uh, said, well, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Rice, you can't enroll, you don't have the money. He said, is there any kind of scholarship or something. They said, well, we, we do have a scholarship for someone who wants to become a Presbyterian minister. He said, that's what I've always wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> and he became a Presbyterian minister, and so was his son. Uh, and so we're glad that uh, Condoleezza, this uh, person who accomplished so much in her life, uh, the first black woman and the second woman to be Secretary of State, uh, once in a while I see her as a sports enthusiast at the Stanford uh, basketball games and uh, she's a concert pianist and so she writes this letter. I am honored that the California Community Colleges continue to recognize the memory of my father through the Dr. John W. Rice Diversity and Equity Award. The system's work to support equity and equality honors my father as a tireless advocate for the transformable nature of education. I would like to congratulate specifically Ignacio, Lisa, and the Veterans Support Program under the leadership of Magdalena. Thank you for your hard work and dedication, the sum of which is a fitting tribute to the memory of my father. Well, we're going to now move to the awards, and I think you're going to have a treat in store for you as you begin to see these special programs that are being honored today. It shows uh, the great depth and diversity of the programs in the community colleges. Um, we have uh, with us the president of Santa Barbara City College, uh, Dr. Andrea Sorbonne, uh, and uh, she is going to uh, talk to us about two programs, or rather, well, one individual and, and one program. Uh, Ignacio uh, Ponce, is, uh, Ponce, I should say, and he is uh, going to be honored as a leader, and then we're going to talk also about the Veterans Support Program. So come up here, Dr. Sorbonne, and, and uh, tell us about these wonderful programs at your college. 
Good morning. It is a real pleasure to be with you this morning representing Santa Barbara City College along with my wonderful colleagues and, and students. And I want to thank you for recognizing today two of our outstanding programs and the faculty and staff who are leading them with the prestigious Rice Diversity Award. And it's very special because this is the first time that Santa Barbara City College is receiving this award. And it's, I heard, the first time ever when two programs or an individual and a program from the same college received this award. So I'm taking all the credit for that uh, because I can. Um, it is uh, with great pride that I address you today. Uh, Santa Barbara City College is a leading community college in the state and, and nation. And Dr. Peter McDougall, our former president, has certainly much to do with that achievement. And I would submit to you that we are lucky that we have the greatest leader of all times of a community college here with us. For more than a century, Santa Barbara City College has opened doors for those who would not otherwise have had a chance. Integrating immigrants into the American society, accommodating students with disabilities, developing the economy through workforce preparation, innovative programs, and comprehensive partnerships, and embracing and celebrating the diversity of our students, faculty, and staff. And I want to make clear that it is Santa Barbara City College, not Fresno City College, which is the oldest community college in the state. <laughs> At Santa Barbara City College, our focus is the success of our students. This focus is achieved through the many exceptional programs and innovative strategies we have put in place. Our commitment to diversity is also part of our focus on student success. The diversity of our students, faculty, and staff also challenges us to constantly expand and enhance the educational opportunities for all of our students, recognizing that each student is unique. Ignacio Ponce, our first tenure track death faculty at Santa Barbara City College, in less than four years, has taken a, our American Sign Language program to a new level of excellence. Not only that the number of students taking American Sign Language classes has doubled, but through the ASL Club, the ASL Summer Immersion Institute, and the deaf panel presentations conducted every semester, Ignacio has successfully instilled interest for the language of deaf people and increased our awareness throughout the entire campus about the possibilities that the American Sign Language provides for all individuals whether they are deaf or not. This academic year, I'm very proud to say that SBCC was recognized for the first time in our history as one of the top 101 best for vet colleges and universities in the US by Military Times Edge magazine. Under the enthusiastic and dedicated leadership of Magdalena Torres, a great friend and colleague, our veteran support program has become one of the best in the nation. For over 36 years, Magdalena started early, was only four, <laughs> has been, she has been the unwavering advocate for veterans coming to Santa Barbara City College to start a new life. Because of her initiative, in 2009, we have changed the transfer credit policy to allow veteran students to receive up to 24 college credits for military training and experience. This change has allowed our college to become a member of the Service Members Opportunity Colleges Consortium, a national consortium of military-friendly institutions with flexible policies that allow military service members and their families to obtain degrees. I am particularly pleased with the recognition for our veterans programs. There is no better way to thank these individuals who have sacrificed their lives and are ensuring our freedom. And the first time immigrant to this country, I'm grateful to you for this great country. So we have we are extremely fortunate to have individuals of the caliber of Ignacio and Magdalena among our faculty and staff. Status quo has never been an option at Santa Barbara City College. We are always reaching for higher goals. 
there is a great quote attributed to Michelangelo. I saw an angel in the marble and carved until I set him free. At Santa Barbara City College, we give our students the best carving tools they need to set free their visions for their future. It is my pleasure now to invite to the podium Ignacio Ponce. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Servan, for your kind words. And thank you to the Board of Governors and the trustees for having this event and honoring Dr. Rice's vision. I would like to say a special thanks to Dr. Janet Shapiro from Santa Barbara City College for nominating me for this award. I would also like to thank my colleagues and sign language students at City College who continue to support and inspire me. And to Dr. Andrea Serban and Dean Marilyn Spaventna for their unwavering faith in the American Sign Language program. And to Dr. Cara Powis for her mentorship. I'd like to thank Gallaudet University and the Deaf Studies program and the ASL program for everything they do to support deaf people throughout the United States. And to my girlfriend, Katherine Ferkinson, for her continued support, even though I am always working. Thank you. <laughs> it is an enormous honor for me to be here among you today. I never envisioned myself standing before you and receiving such an honorable award. Community college has been a continuous, important part of my life. Recently, I've been reflecting on how I even arrived here. And I looked back, and I thought about my own time as a student in community college. And I can remember the first day walking into the classroom as a student at the Los Angeles Technical Trade College. Wow, I was overwhelmed with feelings of insecurity and a, an inordinate list of negative stereotypes that I had internalized and challenges that I thought were insurmountable. And my professors in community colleges didn't see this list. They ignored it. They focused on my capabilities. And that made all of the difference in the world to me and my life. So now I'm here before you today. And when I walk in my classroom as a professor and I see my students, I see them for who they are and who I know they can be. And I like to treat them with the same respect and fairness that was afforded me when I was a student in community college. And that is what I believe that Dr. Rice stood for, what he believed in and what he advocated. And that is what the uh, California Community College system believes in as well, equity and opportunity for everyone. And I want to acknowledge each student who's in community college I in the system, and especially deaf students. I am one of you. Keep going. You're on the right track. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you. I would now like to introduce one of our American Sign Language students, Christina Lago. She has been an outstanding student in our ASL program, and I've seen her grow and blossom in this program, and the impact that it has made on her life is inspiring. So, Christina? Wow. 
What an honor. A long time ago, John Campbell said the following. The job of a teacher is to teach students to see the vitality in themselves. Since I arrived at Santa Barbara Community College and I started learning ASL, I have made a connection with the deaf community. And my life has tremendously changed because of that. While growing up, I struggled. I struggled to fit in with the people around me. And the reason why is because I'm a person who's hard of hearing. I really didn't have any friends to speak of. I was often teased and picked on because of the hearing aids that I wore. I also really struggled to find my own self-identity. Upon taking my first ASL class, the moment that I walked into that room, I felt an instant connection. I felt that I belonged. When that class was finished, I had the need to take more classes. I took all of the classes that Santa Barbara Community College offered in ASL. Later, I joined the ASL club, and I was also a speaker on a deaf panel where I was able to share my experiences. Since I've been a student in the ASL classes, I've begun to feel accepted. I've made friends, very good friends, and along with that, I've become more confident in myself. The last three years have been tremendous. I really am so thankful for the support and encouragement that I've received from Santa Barbara Community College, from the ASL program, from Ignacio, from family, from friends. There have been so many people that have helped and supported me along the way. And I want to say a special thank you to Ignacio and to Santa Barbara Community College for giving me the opportunity and for helping me to believe in myself and for helping me to find a true home in the deaf community. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. Now I would like to introduce one of our other students in the program, Alvaro Vargas. And he just recently graduated from Santa Barbara City College, and he'll be transferring to San Francisco State. Good morning, everyone. It is an honor to be here in front of all of you. I would like to give you a little background about me. I was born in Venezuela, and at 17, I moved here to California. And I started studying at Santa Barbara City College. I realized I needed to take two years of a foreign language. And not knowing which language to take, I thought, oh, I'll take ASL. That's easy. Oh, boy, was I wrong. Whew, it was tough. I met Ignacio Ponce when I took his ASL 102 class. And first of all, Ignacio really changed my appreciation for sign language, for de the deaf community, and for deaf culture. From meeting Ignacio, um, he taught me 102, 103, and 104 levels of sign language, and his support and inspiration helped me become the person I am today. Prior to me starting in the ASL program, I was very shy. I didn't make friends easily, and I never, ever would have stood in front of an audience speaking like I am today. 
And because of Ignacio and the ASL program at Santa Barbara City College, I was able to overcome my fears, become more confident, make friends. For example, I was voted as the SBCC ASL Club Vice President twice and the President once. So I want to thank Ignacio, I want to thank Santa Barbara's ASL program, and I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Well, you can see how inspirational this is, and now we're going to turn to another program at Santa Barbara City College, and uh, that program is the Veterans Support Program, and I want you to welcome Magdalena Torres. Wow. All I can say is I'm extremely humbled and um, quite nervous, but very excited and honored um, to be here. I want to thank all of you here in the room, and I really would like to thank Dr. Andrea Serban for her support and her efforts to bring all of us here today, both of our um, programs. I've been working at Santa Barbara City College for 36 and a half years. I arrived in 1969 as a student and fell in love with the place and stayed. In 1974, I had the honor of being hired to work with the Veterans Program. That was after the Vietnam War. Our program is a very small program now, but one of the successes of our program is that our college has been supportive all these years. We've always had an office. We have worked, um, although we don't have a budget, we are supported through student services. But the most important thing is having the support of your president. If you have the support of the president of your college, that's really what it takes. And working with the resources that are available. Financial aid, getting your students aware of financial aid, aware of EOPS, aware of all of the services, and treating each student as an individual. We're a small group, so we can do that. We call our students at least once a week, sometimes twice a month, three times. It just depends to inform them of activities and things that are going on around campus. We work very hard. I have four work-study students um, paid for by the VA that help us out, that really are the core of our program, and most importantly, the veteran students that bring so much diversity to the campus. They bring diversity in terms of race. They bring diversity in terms of culture, economic status, experience, cultural histories, general diversity, and their life experiences. I want to ask how many veterans we have here in the audience right now, former veterans. Would you like to stand up and over here? Thank you all for serving our country. This is very, very important. These are great times. They're very difficult times. They're great times. They're, they're tension times. But this community is extremely important. And I thank you all very much. Thank you all. I would like to, can you hear me? Good, okay. I would like to introduce Jose Noel Negroni. Jose, Jose Noel was spent five years uh, in the Marines. He's a member of Phi Theta Kappa at the college. He's a math tutor. He's worked in my office previously. His academic goal is to become a medical doctor. How are you doing all? Uh, it sounds great. I mean, even if someone else says it, but it's quite the challenge even to move on. Um, it's been quite the struggle for me, especially putting down the rifle, putting down uh, a discipline that it's not the customary 
to society, how you would put it. But programs like these, not even with Magdalena, has offered a great leadership. It's not even the program, but it's the motivation from the people around you. It doesn't matter if it's Magdalena or the president or the teachers that are around you. The, the options are there, and they make them available for you. From, from getting emails every day, from ensuring that you know that registrations next week, even though if she calls you 20 times, you don't want to hear her anymore. But there's, that's, that's an encouragement. Things that you don't really appreciate now, later on, you're thankful. And I know that with the security, I can focus on my schooling. I can go forward. I can focus on becoming a doctor, be successful in my life, knowing that I did my part to serve my country. But not only that, I can do my part and, and join every one of you and probably being either, who knows, maybe a chancellor, let down medicine, but it's, it's encouraging to, leave, to encourage that legacy and move forward. Thank you. I would also like to introduce Norma Valdez. Norma Valdez served uh, in the U.S. Marine Corps for five years. She spent a seven-month tour in Iraq. She graduated this past spring from SBCC. She's going to be transferring to Cal Poly San Luis in the fall of 2011, where she will be studying kinesiology. She was selected this past year as our outstanding um, veteran of the year. Good morning. The transition from the military back into civilian life can be as stressful as military life itself. But luckily for me, I chose to attend Santa Barbara City College where the outstanding veteran support program made the transition a little less stressful. Ms. Torres is truly an amazing woman. She took time out of her busy, hectic schedule to personally walk me to every department, every faculty member that I needed to talk to to get my enrollment started. And when I saw what passion she had for her work, the respect that she had for the students, and the dedication that she had to our success, I knew I made the right choice to go to Santa Barbara City College. And I just want to thank you for nominating her and for presenting her with the Rice Award. And um, it's her hard work and also Dr. Sorbonne and the community college in general that makes our academic su success possible. Thank you. I'd like to make a comment. If any of you have any extra monies out there, please set up foundation scholarships for the veteran students, okay? This wasn't planned, but as I was standing here, I thought about it, okay? <laughs> Thank you very much. Our next and last is Oscar Corona. Oscar works in the veterans office there at Santa Barbara City College. He served nine years in the military, two terms in the Middle East. He was in the US Army, he wants to become, or he's working toward uh, his pre-nursing um, degree and wants to become an RN. Good morning. Uh, I'm currently a student at Santa Barbara City College and I'm a nursing major. My SBCC journey began a year ago in the month of June. After nine years of service and one failed attempt at college, I walked into the veteran's office in Santa Barbara City College not knowing what to expect. I have to admit, when I noticed the veteran's office was made up of two small cubicles and one small bungalow, fear and negative thoughts came to my mind. I thought, they don't care about veterans here. I won't be getting the kind of attention all the other students are getting. Of course, it was wrong of me to think of the veterans' office in this way. I judged SBCC services to me before they were even given. I was so wrong because the service and the attention that I received to this day have been second to none. I got so many phone calls that for the first week, I thought the veterans' office were telemarketers. <laughs> <laughs> I remember failing my first course, and I remember Ms. Torres say to me, Oscar, it looks like you didn't pass one of your courses. But what she said next will always stick with me. Uh, Ms. Torres said, what kind of obstacles did you encounter this semester and how can, and what can we do to help you overcome them? 
Uh, she recommended the College Achievement Program, and in this program, I was able to work with the mentor one-on-one. -on -one. I got the necessary help I needed to complete my transition from military to civilian life. And in the process, I was able to secure a 4.0 GPA the following semester. <laughs> the rest is history because I now work in the veterans office. I get to give the same kind of help and attention that was given to me. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my veterans advisor, Magdalena Torres, for all her support and guidance. Maggie, you have gone, uh, gone above and beyond the call of duty, and your guidance, selfless service, and friendship have molded me into a student that I thought I could never be. For this I am, and I will always be grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, we aren't through with our inspiration this morning. We have one last award recipient from right here in Sacramento, uh, from American River College, and it's good to see David Vauer, the president of American River College here today. The award recipient is Lisa Aguera Lawrenson, and uh, she was uh, credited with developing American River College's Multicultural Week, a popular ca campus-wide event. Now, uh, we're going to have accepting the award for Dr. Lawrenson is American River College professor and chair of the College Equity Committee, and I'm going to give a good try at this name, but it's uh, Dr. Arunet. Lemony Prysur. <laughs> and uh, we'll call her up. Before I begin today, I would like to thank President Vayar for giving me this opportunity to represent American River College and Dr. Lisa Aguirre Lawrenson. I am honored to accept this distinguished honor on behalf of Lisa and everyone at American River College. Um, I would also like to speak about how Lisa has personally touched my life and changed the way I have been participating at American River College. Uh, Lisa is with her children and husband on vacation in Hawaii. This is a vacation that they had planned a long time ago, and she definitely deserved it. And um, she sends her regards to all on this special day when we honor the memory of Dr. John Rice and um, his tireless advocacy for equity and equality in our society. She further sends her congratulations to those also being honored here today for their work. Lisa extends her recognition to her family members, uh, her mother, Julie Horner, Horner her stepfather, Larry Horner, <laughs> and her two brothers, Greg and Matt Aguilera, and her sister-in-law. Lisa appreciates and thanks those who have given her encouragement, guidance, and support in her work. And now I would like to represent myself and speak about my experience working with Lisa. Um, I would like to tell you a little bit about myself. I was born and raised in a small place in Thailand. 
when I started teaching at ARC, I have had years of experience, but I felt that I preferred to be an observer. After I met Lisa in 2005 and started to work with her on the equity committee, Lisa was our chair then. Um, I was transformed. I decided I no longer wanted to be an observer. Instead, I would like to be a doer. And I started to actively participate in, active, um, in equity and diversity activities. And I am a, the current chair of the equity committee. I have also been involved, involved in the citywide event, the Sacramento World Music and Dance. And this is all because how Lisa's work and dedication to equity and diversity. I was deeply touched by her passion. I'm standing here because I witnessed how she was dedicated and determined to make everyone at ARC feel welcomed and to treat everyone with equitable treatment. And to make everyone feel that she wants to listen to their voices. And because of that, I am standing here and I have only Lisa and support from the college to say that equity and diversity activities for me, for me now are not an option. They're a must. I have got to do it. I firmly believe that Lisa has helped students, faculty, and staff at American River College to live one of our core values, which says that ARC is a community enriched by the experience of students, faculty, staff, and administrators from a variety of cultures, ethnic and eco economic backgrounds, ages, and abilities. Lisa will always cherish this prestigious award and use it as a constant reminder of the importance of her continuing efforts to work with others to help educate and transform our faculty, staff, students, and communities so that we will reach a day when we all celebrate diversity and there is equity and equality for all. Thank you. And now, and now it is my pleasure to introduce our sp student speaker, GQ Delamini, De who graduated from American River College in May and uh, was very active in student government, uh, governments uh, at ARC while he was a student there. GQ. Thank you very much. Good morning. At American River College, we live and work with a simple belief in mind. ARC is so much more than just a school. It is a community. And within that community of over 35,000 students, staff, faculty, and we are a diverse people with from every walk of life and from different parts of the world. Our greatest achievement as a campus has been our ability to harness and celebrate our diversity. Thanks to the unwavering commitment of Dr. Lisa Lawrenson, and our committee members, our administration, faculty, staff, and our students. We have a campus that welcomes all regardless of special needs, sexual orientation, ethnic backgrounds, and religious beliefs. Instead of allowing our differences to divide us, we seek to acknowledge and celebrate our differences in a continuing effort to build that unity we so often speak of in community. Our goal, to create an experience that educates not only the mind, but the heart. Having sat on hiring, planning, and other committees, I've witnessed firsthand the importance of the equal opportunity and non-discrimination that Dr. Rice spoke of. Only a few months ago, we held our annual Multicultural Week, which brings together the entire campus to celebrate diversity. For the first time this year, we, the students, asked to take the lead role in organizing this event because we felt we were ready to take on the responsibility and it was an overwhelming success. This is in many ways testament to ARC. Everyone has a voice, and their voice will not only be heard, it'll be nurtured, encouraged, 
and celebrated. Leaving Zimbabwe, coming to America for the first time, and starting college only days later would seem like an enormous task. But from my very first day at ARC, I felt welcome and at home. Lisa and many others inspired me and many of my peers to get involved and join the mission towards equality for all. As I transfer on to complete my education, I leave gladly knowing that others will continue to enjoy a multicultural learning experience. Once again, I congratulate you, Lisa, and congratulations, American River College. Thank you. And now it is my pleasure to uh, have Reggie Brown, one of our current students, to speak about how his life has been touched by Lisa's work. Reggie is majoring in criminal justice, and his goal is to earn a law degree. Reggie Brown. Good morning. Uh, this room was a lot smaller when it was empty yesterday. <laughs> Um, in addition to being a current student at American River College, I was also fortunate enough to work there. And prior to my experiences at ARC, I feel that I was completely oblivious to diversity. Even though it was all around me, I never took notice of it, I never acknowledged it, and I never thought it was something that should be appreciated and strived for. Now, as a student, going to ARC was definitely an eye-opening experience, and it widened my perspective a great deal. But working there was extremely beneficial and instrumental in exposing me to diversity. You know, I was fortunate enough to work in departments like Campus Life and interact with uh, student government, various clubs and their leaders, and participate in events that celebrate diversity in our campus-wide and inclusive of all students. Um, events like Multicultural Week. And coming from someone who's never been to an open mic contest or seen Native American dancing or taiko drumming, it was truly an amazing thing and it was unlike anything I'd seen before. And simply put, as a student and as an employee, I'm proud to be attached to an institution of learning that has faculty and staff members who strive to enhance, promote, and maintain diversity on campus. Uh, staff members like Dr. Lawrenson. And I feel that I owe Dr. Lawrenson and staff and faculty members like her who advocate and take steps to facilitate actions that make ARC a wonderful and diverse place. I owe you a debt of gratitude. It's because of your actions that I've become a better student, a better friend, and a better human being. So thank you. And our last student speaker is Amy Cuevas. Amy is a 2010 graduate of the ARC Interpreter Preparation Program. Currently, she works as an interpreter at American River College. Amy. Thank you. I feel privileged to be here today to honor Dr. Lisa Lawrenson. Dr. Lawrenson was pivotal in the setup of our American Sign Language Interpreting Lab for the Interpreter Preparation Program. For many years, our program did not have access to a lab. Teachers would make do with both limited equipment and space, often finding a closet in which to record students' skills. Thanks to all of her hard work, she was able to simplify that process by arranging an agreement with the journalism department for a joint facility, and thus our ASL interpreting lab was created. She also coordinated how the time and workstations would be shared between both departments. Because of Dr. Lawrenson, students now have access to 25 iMac computers with built-in webcams for reporting purposes, individual workstations, DVD equipment, and over 300 DVD resources. In addition to this, she also established a position where a full-time ASL professor was able to divide time between instruction and lab coordination, a critical element in ensuring the lab's success, which has been a tremendous benefit to our program. The lab, the lab now makes it so that we as students can comfortably record and analyze our skills and receive guidance on site from professors in a more resourceful time frame, which was invaluable to me. 
The interpreter preparation program at American River College has challenged me and allowed me to be more open-minded while learning about myself and my abilities and the potential to impact others' lives positively. This program has taught me that while there is a benefit to helping others, the true importance lies in being an ally to individuals who have the power within themselves, but may just need a voice or a set of hands to express those thoughts to others and to educate those who may not understand the significance of this. Thank you. This concludes our awards ceremony. Let's give all the recipients one last standing ovation for their work. I'd also like to say thank you again to Mrs. Clara Rice for being with us uh, today. It's an honor to have you here each and every year and recognize the accomplishments of your uh, husband and yourself. So thank you. Thank you. The Board of Gover Governors meeting now stands in recess. We will uh, come back into a session over at the Chancellor's office in approximately one hour uh, from now. Thank you all. <laughs>